Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Cellar Notes. I'm your host, Matt Getch, and today I have with me a winemaker from Paso Robles, California. He is the winemaker for Brady Wines and for Robert Hall Winery, Don Brady. Don, welcome to the show. Matt, thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. Why yeah. don't you start off and tell us uh, a little bit about yourself, a little background, a little history. Well, originally I made wine in Texas, worked there for about 20 years at different wineries, kind of as Texas was starting up and uh, being reborn, as it were, and uh, about 15, uh, 15, 16 years ago we moved to Paso Robles and I went to work for Robert Hall. And Central Coast includes a number of different wine growing regions, yeah, right? Yeah, Central Coast starts just, just south of San Francisco Bay and goes all the way down south of Santa Barbara. It's a huge appellation in California. Uh, Paso Robles is probably one of the most exciting areas on the Central Coast. Yeah, you see that a lot out there. You'll see a lot of Central Coast labels on wines, a lot of Paso Robles, a lot of Napa Valley. People like to promote that. But what makes Paso Robles different than the rest of them? I think uh, Paso Robles is we, it's an exciting opportunity to make some really, really nice wines at some, uh, at some value pricing. And we haven't we the real estate uh, pricing is not is not where it is in the Napa Valley, and so we're able to produce some really nice wines that are competitive with those wines, but at a fraction of the cost. There's still some really nice soil over there in, in Paso Robles. Abs absolutely, and a, and a great diversity of soil. We have alluvial soils that most of our vineyards are are grown in, anywhere from uh, alluvial soils to ancient seabeds that are uplifted with uh, in the hills. And you make wines for not only Brady Winery, which is obviously Don Brady, yeah. has something to do with you, right? Yeah, that's right. That's, it's the family, the family gig. And you also work for the Robert Hall Winery. I went to work for Robert Hall. Robert Hall's from here and went to work for him in 2001 and have made his wines. And that's uh, Robert Hall Winery we grew out of uh, out of his dream, basically, and to right now we're making about 70,000 cases. It's distributed nationally, and uh, some really super wines. Yeah, you can see the Robert Hall label almost all over the place. Yes, very very common label to see. You can tell us a little bit about uh, what kind of what kind of wines do they do? They focus on any particular varietals? Uh, the, the, what we do best in Paso is uh, actually Bordeaux varieties. About 50 percent of what's grown there is uh, Cab Merlot or Cabernet Franc, Petit Verdot, Malbec to a lesser extent, but, but that's what we do best. And then we also have uh, a whole Rhone set of wines, and, and we do both of those at Robert Hall. Cabernet's, the, for sure, the, that's the, the leader of the band and about 50% of what we do. But then we, have, uh, we do have, we make a Syrah also, uh, Cuvée de Robles, which is a red Rhone blend, uh, Rhone Rosé, our Rosé de Robles, and uh, Merlot, make a broad range of wines, but primarily focusing on the Bordeaux area and then Rhone. And there's a very interesting label I see. I walk by it all the time and it, just, it always catches my eye. It's something called Rhone de Robles. Rhone de Robles. Was Rhone de Robles, now it's Cuvée de Robles. Right. And so we did a name change and actually the, the history of that is back in 2001 when we were first opening up, we made a uh, Red Roan blend to basically looking after Robert's, Robert's desire to have, uh, to represent the Roan and the wines he made and what does best in Paso. And we submitted two labels. We submitted a Roan de Robles label and a Cuvée de Robles label. They were both approved with the uh, BATF at the time. So we went with the with the label that was most descriptive of the wine, the Rhone de Robles. We've since been contested by, by the Rhone wine producers, and rather than, rather than squabble with them and get into a, a protracted fight, we, we fell back to the Cuvée de Robles label. And what kind of uh, varietals are in that wine, just out of curiosity? It's a primarily it's a Grenache-driven uh, blend, so Grenache is the base always. And uh, then we use Senso, um, Syrah, and Petit Syrah uh, in the blend. It makes a really nice, big, round, uh, grown blend that's really versatile. It goes great with a lot of foods, and uh, it's a, a, a hit for sure. So it's going to be a little bit on the fruit forward side? Absolutely. A Absolutely. little bit on the heavier side, not nearly as light as like a. 
Pinot Noir, you know, Correct. people consider as light. And they're not, not too far off. I mean, it's, it's, it's soft and round, easy to drink, and uh, it's, not, it's not structured like a Cabernet or a Merlot is. It's definitely a big round wine. It's really good for a lot of, a lot of different uh, places. Why don't you tell me a little bit about the rosé? I hear it's only available in three different states, and Minnesota being... Rose, the rosé that we make is kind of the, the rosé counterpart to the, to the Cuvée de Robles. And what it, it's made from uh, uh, Syrah, Grenache, Senso, Cunoise, and Mavedra. And uh, it's a really nice little wine. The, the Syrah, it's got quite a bit of color. The Syrah, and that comes from the Syrah. Uh, Syrah, we make 48 hours skin contact in the press before we press it. The uh, Sanso Cunois, uh, Grenache, and Mavet, we go direct to press. We press, press it out immediately, and the color's not stable on those varieties. And so we put all those components together, ferment them, and it makes a really nice, light, fresh uh, rosé. Great for warm, warm summer days or in, in the spring. And uh, that's only available it was primarily in California, and then the, our number two market's Texas, uh, and oh, then go figure, go figure, yeah. right? And then uh, number three market for us is Minnesota, and so we have it in those states. We're, we're, we don't want to have old inventory. So how'd you end up choosing Minnesota? I mean, I can see where you went, where you went from the jump from California to Texas, and you know we got the whole history of Don Brady there, but but you have what? to have the history of Robert Hall too. Robert's, oh, from, Robert's here, from Minnesota. From Minnesota. That explains and that. And so that's uh, it was the it was the natural. And just the three three states because there's just not that much inventory. Or? Well, we, no, it, there's there's very good inventory on it, but we've had it in we've had it in broader markets. And the challenge with rosé is most consumers want to have the rosé the year following the vintage, and we had it, we ran into a problem with stranded inventory and older older vintages so we just pulled it all back in so only in california for a period of time and then we branched out a little bit to texas texas does really well with robert hall and a little bit to uh to minnesota all right excellent well don i'm going to wrap it up here i thank you very much for coming you in bet. spending some time Thanks with for us. having me I want everybody and to invite everybody out there to go out and find yourself some good Paso robles wine definitely check out the robert hall and the brady lines and uh, we'll see you next time on Seller Notes. Thanks for watching.